So a couple of days ago, um, I did a video where I talked about how 2023 was, again, another year where, you know, in the hands of certain fans, you know, especially when it comes to fanfics, you know, Tales was still looked at as a ladies' man. And I can tell you, some of these stories, like I mentioned in that original video, you know, when you read them, they really make you go like, whoa, okay, that's an interesting pairing, or whoa, okay, that's kind of taking it a bit far, you know. It basically makes you kind of surprised of like how far these stories go from a very adult NFSW erotic manner. But there is one story that I talked about called The Aunt and Nephew's Casual Night, where Bunny Rabbit and Tails would get it on in a very openly manner. And what I mean by openly manner is Bunny and Antoine are married, just like they are in the Archie book pre and post reboot. And what's interesting about this, though, is the marriage in uh, in this story by the cyborg fox, uh, you know, as he's known on archiveofourown.org, and that one Tales writer on uh, inkbunny.net. Uh, what's interesting about Tales and uh, not Tales, but Bunny and Antoine's marriage uh, in this story, you know, like I said, known as Aunt and Nephew's Casual Night, is basically their marriage is an open marital relationship. In other words, Antoine knows that Tails, you know, comes around and helps Bunny satisfy her more hardcore, near BDMS, you know, rough, you know, um, sexual urges, while he takes care of her sexual urges in a more intimate, gentleman, take it slow, romantic kind of way. And... You know, this story is really fun. You know, it's really fun to read and interesting, to say the least. Because there's one part in the story to where uh, Tails basically is he unleashes the inner beast within him, as he's described to do in some of the other stories he gets paired up with certain girls in. Um, he asks Bunny basically if she's on a pill, and, you know, a certain pill. And she says yes. Because, you know, he and she basically tells him that she's always also informed Antoine that she is as well. Because basically Tails decides good because I'm going to go out because basically Tails says, hey, I'm going to go all the way tonight and I want to go all the way tonight raw. And basically that's what happens. You know, that's what happens. And. You know, the reason, you know, he asked this question and she confirms, you know, yes is the answer is so that way there won't be any unexpected consequences when it comes to, you know, them having their big finale. Well, the way this ties into this review um, is because of the fact that the, another story that was written uh, three years prior or four years prior or well, three years prior to, you know, that one uh, by the same person is called Southern Fox 11. And that's L-O-V-I-N. And in this story, basically, uh, just like with Aunt and Nephew's Casual Night, Bunny and Antoine are married, you know, just like they are in the pre- and post-Archie Sonic uh, comics. You know, they are married. But the difference is, though, unlike the Aunt and Nephew's Casual Night story, where, you know, they do have intimacy with each other in a very gentle, you know, romantic, you know, take it slowly kind of manner, here, Antoine in Southern Fox 11, you know, Antoine doesn't want to, you know, give in. He doesn't want to help Bunny satisfy her urges, if you know what I mean. So what happens is Bunny um, goes to Tails, and surprisingly she's thought about Tails, especially as he's grown up and become a young man, because, yes, in some of these stories, just like this one I'm talking about and the one I just talked about, he is aged up to, you know, um, to consent to age of 18, 21, you know, years, 18 to 21 years. So anyway... You know, Bunny decides, well, if, you know, Antoine won't give her that satisfaction, she'll see if Tails will. And basically, after kind of showing off a bit of a body to him, like letting her jacket or, you know, shirt of her sleeve or tank top, you know, kind of slip down, you know, she then decides to crawl up to him, lean onto his body, you know, chest to chest, like she's melting into him, and she ends up kissing him on the lips, and it takes... And all it takes is her doing this stuff, you know, flirting with him and then leaning on to him, leaning, you know, chest to chest 
onto him like she's melting into him and then kissing him for him to you know it, to, for him to basically concede he basically decides you know what she's too hot to say no to and this might be my only chance because he's at first he's hesitant but then he decides you know what she's too hot to say no to and it might be my only chance and they just go from there but what's interesting you know what's interesting though is the fact that you know instead of just satisfying the bottom you know front region the bottom front region you know a bunny like she initially hoped he would and he does you know tails decides to take it a step further by also sa- by also satisfying her you know by basically going and entering into her rear bottom region Basically, he satisfies her in the front upper region, but then he satisfies her by turning her onto her hands and legs and going, um, you know, going, I guess you could say, into the back, you know, region and help and satisfying her there as well. And they do cuddle and everything. They do cuddle. Um, Afterwards, she kisses him on the neck. You know, he, you know, kind of, you know, strokes her body and everything. And what's interesting is she tells him that, you know, because he's still kind of worried. You know, he was happy to help her out, but he's still kind of worried. And she tells him, hey, don't worry, Antoine won't find out, which, you know, kind of comforts Tails a little bit. Be like, okay, good. That's all I want to know. You know, so afterwards, you know, so after cuddling for a bit more, she she's allowed to basically get up or she gets up, goes into his shower, cleans up. So there's no like musky evidence and everything or smell, you know, on her after what she just did, you know, and then she leaves after giving Tails a kiss on the cheek. Now, what's interesting about some of the moments in that initial story from four years ago is that. You know, there are certain moments that are described as, you know, both of them looking deeply, you know, into each other's eyes or staring deeply into each other's eyes or staring lustfully into each other's eyes. And when I read, you know, these descriptions, you know, where these moments would take place after they would kiss or they'd get ready for the big, you know, moment and everything, you know, I looked at these and I'm like, you know, essentially, you know, essentially, in my opinion, when I looked at, you know, I, when I read and looked at these moments being described as they were, I was like, dang, Cyborg Fox, all you have to do, all you have to do is add in, you know, the uh, add in, you know, the another saying of, you know, of, you know, the falling in love with each other. And that's it. That to me is all you would have to do is just add in, you know, in a quotation or in parentheses, just say, you know, because they're falling in love with each other, they just don't know it. You know, that's all you had to do, because that's ha- basically, when you, uh, when you hear about and read about all kinds of romantic stories, in a sense, or even watch romantic scenes in stories that you might enjoy, movies and all that, you know, one of the things that always happens before characters kiss and everything is they stare deeply into each other's eyes. Like, you know, the, like they know they're meant to be. Like they know they're falling in love with each other. But, you know, we just don't see that until maybe, you know, moments after or later on in the story. And the way it's described in Southern Foxy Lovin', you know, with Bunny and, Bunny and Tails doing that to each other, it's almost like, again, all he'd have to do is add in parentheses, you know, all he'd have to do is add in parentheses that they will fall in love with each other, they just didn't know it. Well, I guess he realized that some fans, if not a lot of fans, would want a continuation, and one fan realized this as well, thus they requested the, they requested the Cyborg Fox, aka that one Tales writer, to do a continuation of the story. And that's what they did with this story called Southern Foxy Consequences, because here Bunny finds out she is expecting, she is with child, you know, after what happened with Tails. But she kind of finds it hard to, you know, she kind of finds it hard to explain the situation. She knows she can't explain it to Antoine because he'd be upset. So she tries to find a way to explain it to Tails. The first time goes awry and all that. But finally she is able to, you know, uh, make it up to Tails and everything. And basically explaining her situation with him, He, you know, Tails basically, you know, realizes that, you know what, 
if Antoine's not going to be for her, be there for her, I am. And let's just say, you know, he. End, let's just say, basically, they commence, you know, by they commence by uh, basically consenting the love to each other, you know, by fish. You know, they basically commence by consenting the love to each other by getting it on once again. Uh, because what happens is that, you know, Tails, you know, goes to Bunny's house, Bunny and Antoine's house after he's, you know, jogging out, you know, and, you know, jogging around, I guess, the kingdom or something. You know, he goes to their house, you know, and, you know, he basically has dinner with Bunny. Bunny's all dressed nice and attractive. She's ba basically when Bu Tails sees her dressed the way she is, he's like, dang, you were going to wear that for Antoine? And, you know, and he didn't, and he didn't notice? Dang. You know, because it's one of those dresses that basically will make any guys, I guess, as it's described, any guy's eyes pop out of their heads. So, so basically, long story short, they end up having dinner. You know, she flirts with him a little bit by doing little footsies as well. And she basically asks him to do the dishes, clean the dishes, which he does. Well, she goes and prepares the special, bed, uh, special dessert in her bedroom, her and Antoine's bedroom. And after he's done, he follow. And after he's done doing the dishes, that being tails, he goes up to the bedroom, goes up to Aunt and Bunny's bedroom, sees a, you know, sees a, like a line of rose petals leading up into the bedroom and up to the bed, where he sees Bunny basically laying there seductively with petals are on the bed and on her a little bit, her upper region, the upper part of her dress open for her upper region to, you know, get some air, and everything. And she basically seductively tells Tails to come and, you know, have his dessert. She's worked on it hard. And let's just say one thing leads to another and everything. They both undressed and realized they both went commando, you know, if you know what I mean. And they just go from there. And basically the intimacy, the moment together is a lot more rougher and stronger and more passionate than the first time in Southern Fox 11. But the ending comes when they finally get to that big moment, that big climactic moment, if you know what I mean. That's when Bunny finally uh, decides to scream out exactly what she was trying to tell Tails earlier. Because again, like I said earlier, she tried to tell him, but the first time failed. But this time, during this one cl climactic moment, she finally just burst out and says you know, that she's expecting and that you know, Tails is the father. You know, of course, after they catch their breath, you know, Tails is a little surprised by this. You know, Bunny kind of feels a little, like, ashamed, like, you know, may, like, you know, she, you know, she feels a little ashamed, and she, and she also understands that if Tails doesn't want to be with her and everything after this, but Tails, understandably, you know, is fine with it. He's understandably, surprisingly fine with it, and says, well, what makes you think I would want to, makes you, what makes you think I wouldn't want to be with you, or raise a family with you? And he does acknowledge that, yeah, they just start the, they just started the relationship, and they're already expecting, but he says he couldn't think, you know, but basically he's more, but basically he's willing to, you know, have all this happen. He's willing to go with it, and everything, to, to be with Bunny, and Bunny is happy with this, and all that, and she decides that, you know, she wants to say goodbye to Antoine in a way that will kind of teach Antoine a lesson of, hey, this is what you had and you lost it. And what she does along with Tails is she records the video that she puts onto DVD um, that shows uh, her and Tails basically, you know, getting it on with each other uh, intimately. And the way the, the video starts and everything is, you know, Tails basically... Uh, taking care of Bunny's bottom region, um, you know, but he's taking care of Bunny's bottom region, um, if you know what I mean, while well, she's talking as best she can into the camera, and then later on it's kind of described like they also kind of got it on in front of the camera as well, and the reason they did this is because Antoine comes home from his job, because basically it's essentially... It's essentially noted here in the story that he that he values his work and his job, you know, as a godsman and a swordsman, captain of the guards and all that, more the more so than he does his marriage with Bunny. So what happens is that Antoine comes home, and he gets this feeling that something's amiss, 
and he notices a lot of what would he notices what essentially is a lot of Bunny's uh, belongings and personal belongings and things that Bunny had probably bought and you know for herself. He starts noticing that a lot of Bunny's things are gone, and he's like, "What's going on here?" And then he goes up to the bedroom and he notices that the bedroom is a, a wreck. It is a wreck and everything, but there's also a strong musky smell. And he notices the smell as soon as he comes into the house, but he also notices it very strongly when he goes into the bedroom. And when he goes into the bedroom, he notices there's a bunch of claw marks all over the wall and everything. And the, you know, the sheets are just a wreck. Um, basically, you can kind of tell, you know, Antron doesn't know it at first, but we as the readers know that those claw marks and everything being, you know, basically disheveled and everything was due to Bunny and Tails kind of getting it on in a very hardcore, rough manner, if you know what I mean. But basically, he notices a DVD in the middle of all this because, you know, the first initial thought he has is, you know, did something happen to to Bunny? Did something happen to his, you know, to his wife? You know, he's not too sure. And then when he watches the DVD, he sees exactly what I just uh, described and all that. So, yeah, basically, you know, Bunny tells him that, hey, you know, she essentially tells him, hey, this, you, this, you know, this could have been yours, you know, but you failed. You know, you failed. This could have been yours, but you failed. Now it's his. It's, it's, it's tails. It's, you know, I belong to him. And what's interesting is, you know, later on, you know, everybody, they hear about this, you know, and at first they're a little disappointed in her, you know, they're a little disappointed in her and all that, but they're not totally disappointed after they find out why she did it and what, the way Anton was, you know, mistreating her and everything or not, you know, uh, being there for her when she needed him uh, to be there. You know, so, you know, they become, you know, so at first they're a little, like, a lot of people are, you know, like, a little, like, you know, disgusted, but then they kind of, like, let that disgust fade away when they find out the truth. Like, oh, okay, we get it now, we understand, you know, we're, that, okay, we're cool now, we're cool. And then Sally, she contacts Bunny, and at first Sally tries to essentially act like she's upset and disappointed. She tries to scold Bunny, but Bunny, being her BFF, can see right through that, even through the phone, you know, through the phone, you know, because, you know, because Sally calls her on the phone, she can essentially see right through Sally's scolding and all that. And then she just basically, basically with a smirk on her face, says, like, you want a piece of him, don't you, Sally girl? And... You know, Sally, after hearing this on the phone, just goes dead silent. And then she just sighs and she's like, yes. You know, because Sally essentially is not dating Sonic in this story. She's not with Sonic anymore. And she's trying to find somebody to, you know, replace, you know, not only replace Sonic, but kind of satisfy her urges. And Bunny's like, look, if you want Tails to help you out, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'll let him know. And, you know, and Sally's at first like, you know, I can't do that to you, Bunny. And Bunny's like, hey, don't worry about it. Just get your cute butt over here and we'll talk about it. We'll get, we'll get things situated. And that's the end. And Sally's like, okay, no problem. Because, again, she try, Sally basically on the phone tries to scold Bunny, you know, tries to pretend to scold, tries to basically make it sound like she's disappointed in the in Bunny because her and Bunny raised uh, tails like a nephew, like their son, like their little brother. And Bunny, you know, again, being Sally's best friend, doesn't buy it, doesn't buy the scolding, can see right through it. And she basically gets Sally to agree, okay, I'll give him a look. I'll give, I'll give Tails a look at, or I'll give, uh, I'll give a, an opportunity. I'll give Tails an opportunity. I'll give him a look at. And that's how the story ends. So essentially, he's leaving. So what Cyborg Fox is doing here is he's leaving this, you know, continue, this sequel to the Southern Fox Eleven, and Southern, you know, this sequel to Southern Fox Eleven. I should say he's leaving it on a cliffhanger for anybody to commission and maybe request and say, hey, can we get a follow up on this too? Now that we're going to, you know, bring Sally into the picture. So. So yeah, overall, and I know I sound like I rambled a little bit and I was repetitive, very repetitive with my words. I do apologize. Like I say, it's late. I'm trying to do this before my mom gets home. 
but yeah, the story is really interesting. Um, it's a sequel that's four years in the making, surprisingly. And if you want to look at it, just go to inkbunny.net. Look up, you know, the look up the one tales writer, or go to archiveofourown.org. Look up the cyborg fox. Go to the category tales and the girls of Mobius. And just scroll down to the to the bottom, and you will see, you know that, you, and you will see this as his latest story. But that's all I'm going to say, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Comment if you like. And until next time, I'm out.